the sap green color, which is pigment number... I don't have that one written down either. I am not prepared for the video. 728. It's Christy back with another video and something came in the mail that was really exciting and I wanted to share it with all of you. I ordered from a store called Art for Ukraine on Etsy. I ordered some Rosa Gallery watercolor dot card swatches and they finally came. Um, these dot cards have a very generous amount of paint and they have all 60 colors in the Rosa Gallery line. This one is a little bit shiny because it's in a, um, it's in like a page protector and I'm not going to try to take it out because it is a little bit sticky and, um, I would need to, I need to put some cold on it to get it to completely remove. They definitely, um, are sticky paints and so that is something that you kind of need to know about Rosa, but, um, uh, I actually got two of these. This is one that I am preserving to hopefully give away to somebody at some point. I uh, haven't decided how I'm going to do that yet, but I went ahead and I swatched one, and the one that I swatched, uh, you're gonna see in a minute. But my goal with this was just to do kind of an update on the Rosa Gallery paints. I love my Rosa Gallery watercolors, but there are a ton of different combinations and sets of Rosa palettes out there. And so I wanted to do a video talking about each color, um, the granulation, the light fastness, and where they are, what palettes they're in, so that if you go to buy Rosa Watercolors, you can kind of have an idea about what you are getting. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the swatch video now. After the swatch video, I'm going to go through everything that I can tell you about the Rosa Gallery Watercolors.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I have swatched these out and um, I'm going to talk to you about the swatches. I'm going to talk to you about all kinds of stuff. So let's go through step by step. First of all, with the swatches that I did here, you'll notice that I put a little black line down each swatch just to test opacity. And they were pretty much as I expected. Anything that had the white paint added had a little bit of, you know, opacity. Some of the yellows and oranges had some opacity, which is not a terribly big surprise. But for the most part, these are pretty transparent watercolors and they are really pigmented. I don't know how much you can see that. Uh, the swatch card is all in Russian, but um, I have this little booklet right here, which has all of the numbers and they are translated into English. So um, follow along with me here. I will use numbers and names, but I'm definitely going to stick with numbers as well in case you're looking for certain pigments or certain colors, etc. So there are a couple of things going on here. There is a G and an N listed. Some have just a G, some have just an N. N means it is a natural pigment. G means it granulates. So that's just information that you may want to have that may be important to you that may not be important to you. The next thing that may or may not be important is light fastness. Um, I work a lot in sketchbooks. Light fastness isn't entirely important to me. But it's a little bit important if I'm going to do something that I'm going to hang on a wall. And as far as I'm concerned, that does happen sometimes. These are a nice set of paints. I have full pans. So there is a chance that I would use these in a setting where light fastness might be something I care about. The three starred paints are all extraordinarily light fast. The two star is, let me read what they say, what the, what the symbols actually mean according to the company. Um, high light fastness, medium light fastness, and low light fastness. So there is nobody with low light fastness. There is one that has, um, it, that's completely fugitive, and that is the 744 Opera Pink. It is not light fast at all. That is not surprising because it's a fluorescent paint. If you know anything at all about pigments, um, that is not surprising. But um, it is in quite a few of the sets, and we're going to go through my swatches um, next, and, and I'm going to show you what different sets use that opera pink and what I would suggest doing about it. All right, the next thing we wanna talk about is anything that's medium light fast. So we have uh, a few paints that are medium light fastness all in the same column. We've got the violet, we've got the olive green and the regular green. Those are medium light fastness. Everything else is considered high light fastness. And that's really cool. So these are really quality paints. Again, they use gum arabic um, and they have highlight fastness for the most part and you get full pans with these paint sets. So for the price, I really think they're hard to beat. I really am enjoying them a lot. So one of the reasons that I wanted to get this watch card is because they have 60 different paint colors and I only have 33 of them. I wanted to know what was going on with the others that I don't have. And when I looked at my booklet that I was sent, there were so many different iterations of palettes in here with the same paints just mixed up. So we have four different classic palettes, five different classic palettes, a portrait palette, two botanical palettes, a modern palette, and this isn't even all that their website lists. Their website lists a landscape palette. It lists an urban sketching palette. Is the portrait palette in here? It is. Um, it lists a romantic palette. So there were just too many options and I wanted to see with the swatch card, with the dot card, swatch them all out and let's see what each set looks like. So that's what I did here and what I'm going to do for you now is I'm going to kind of hold these up so that you can see or actually let me go ahead and see if I can zoom in just a little bit. I can. Excellent. So let me go ahead and remove everything but my booklet here. And we're gonna talk about each set individually and what I think is a pro or a con, which ones I like best if I was going to pick one of these paint sets. Because um, other than looking at online swatches, it's really hard and I think having an actual person swatch it and talk to you about it is, is useful. So hopefully you're finding this, this to be useful. So there is a classic set all the way up to 28. 
is the biggest classic set that I saw. Um, the, the classic 12 is up here. I would say in the classic 12, it's interesting to me that they do include a black, but they don't include more cool reds. I don't dislike that palette, but I do think we're missing a very, um, a warmer green, a cooler red, maybe even a purple. And um, really off the bat, I want to talk about paint 716 and 715. 715 is ultramarine. 716 is cobalt blue. Let me get the name exactly right. I know that 715 is ultramarine, but 716 is cobalt blue. Yes, it's cobalt blue. I find 716, the cobalt blue, which is non-granulating, to be weaker than 715. I think the pigment payout for the ultramarine is better. It's a more true ultramarine, but they're very similar and one is not terribly cool. They're both either neutral or warm blues and I would like to see a cool blue in that classic set. So then I would look at the, I have the classic set of 24. So this is the set of 28, all of these here. I have the top 24. That's what came originally in this little plastic guy right here. Um, and any of the classic sets of 24 have the same paints from what I can see online. The 28 set adds one, two, three, four colors. I think adding a little bit of money, it was really a good deal. In the classic set of 21, you are still, in my opinion, missing out on a cool blue. That 729 is a beautiful paint and I really like it and I wish that it came in some of the smaller sets here. But overall, I'm really happy with my classic set of 24. I think it's a decently well-rounded paint set. I still, when I got it, mentioned that I wanted a cooler red. This 708 color here isn't too bad as a cool red, but I really like a good pink paint. So 708 is Carmine. It's not bad, but there are some really nice options for pink paint that I like better in other sets. Let's take a look at the portrait set. I think the portrait set looks really nice. I would love for somebody that does portraits with watercolor to test it. Uh, I think that it's got enough cool tones and differing tones that you can mix a lot of really nice uh, skin tones and facial colors. And so I really think that portrait set looks pretty well-rounded. I would be interested, like I said, I'm not a portrait person, so I'd be interested what a portrait person thinks. I will mention that 744 is that Fugitive Opera Rose, so if you're going to do work for clients, you might want to swap that color out for something that's a little bit more light fast, and we'll talk about what that is in a minute. Here we have the Urban Sketching set. I think that's a neat little set. I think it's a little more well-rounded, a little more well-rounded maybe than the Classic 12 up here. Again, because there's that 709, which is a cooler red, that's that magenta rose, and that's a really deep swatch of it. 709 over here has is a better example of what that magenta rose looks like. And if I was going to swap a color for the opera rose in this palette, that's what it would be. It would be that 709. That's uh, what I would put in its place. But for the Urban Sketching set, again, I just think 716 and 715 are such samey colors. I would love a cooler blue in place. But that brings me to the Landscape set, which I think is actually one of the best sets that they offer for 21 paints. If I was going to be between the Classic 21 and the Landscape 21, I would pick the Landscape 21. I think it's a more versatile set. The Botanical sets are pretty neat looking. There's some interesting additions here. Lots of really beautiful reds and pinks and purples, a really nice variety of green colors. They do put that Fugitive Opera Rose in both the 14 and the 28 set of the botanical paints, just if that's important to you. And they do have, even in the 14 botanical set, a cool blue. So again, I like that botanical set. The modern set is really unique. It has one of my favorite Rosa colors that I purchased after the fact because I wanted to have it and that's the 741 cobalt teal. I believe that's called cobalt teal. Let me double check. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Uh, cobalt turquoise. See, I did tell you the wrong thing. So 741 is called cobalt turquoise, but it is a beautiful paint color. 
So this modern set's pretty nice. It is a little more what I would expect from a set of paints. 714 is turquoise. That's a really dark swatch of it. This is a better example of the pigments of it on camera. Um, but so you do have kind of a cool blue green that you could use to make mixes. So I do like the modern set. I am, you know, a mo more modern painter. So that might be something that is just for a preference for me. The romantic set of 28, I, I don't really know what, who this paint set is for. It's kind of pretty. It's kind of neat. I don't think that it's for me. There's a lot of paints with white filler in here, like 745, 748, 742, 756. I believe all included a white pigment. I will check that. I know these three do, and I know that the lavender does. And 756. Yep, it's got PW6 in it, which is the titanium white. So I feel like at some point this is almost like a gouache kind of color palette, but it's not gouache, and it's not going to give you the opacity that gouache does. So I'm not sure. It's not for me, but it might be for you, and you might really like it, and maybe this is a color palette that you really enjoy, and it would be a good paint set for you. So here is the swatches of it. Feel free, like I said, to take screenshots of any of these paint sets with the pigments listed. I just thought this would be a really good thing for somebody that was looking to buy Rosa watercolors and to see up close and personal in a video what they swatch out to look like. Last, the very last set of swatches are these two sets. This is my set and I'm gonna talk about it, but the other set that I find really interesting and I'm hoping to get my hands on it Fingers crossed, I talked to uh, one of my Rosa watercolor dealers and they said they should have it next week. So hopefully by the time you're watching this, I may have it on my way to me, but this is the mono pigmented set. So what does that mean? A mono pigmented set means that each paint is exactly one pigment that it was ground with and made with. I just think that's a neat idea. I really loved the color selection here. It's got Cools and um, it's got cools and warms for the for the at least the set of 21. It's got cool and warm yellow, cool and warm red, cool and warm blue, some really beautiful greens, um, a really interesting selection of browns. The only thing it doesn't have is like a black or a gray. So I tried to mix one myself. I used 729, which is the bright blue, 709, which is the um, magenta rose, and 703, which 703 is cadmium yellow medium to mix this color. It's not muddy. It's very clear. It mixed really easily. So I was able to get a nice neutral without doing too much work. Now, 703 is not in the set of 12. The other two are, but I am pretty certain that if you use 731, um, you would not have a hard time getting to a nice neutral either. I may go back and if you guys want me to, when I get the mono pigmented set, I will play with it and show you because I am I am in search of it. I do think I want to buy it and, and go over it on the channel. So my 24 plastic um, pan set and then the nine extras that I bought rounds out to this. I did buy Opera Rose before I realized that it was fugitive. So I also bought the Magenta Rose later on because I wanted to have something that was less fugitive in case I want to mix with a cool red and do something that's gonna hang on a wall. Let me go ahead and pull this palette out and zoom back out so that we can talk about my whole palette and what I've been doing with it. Stay tuned, I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. So here's my set swatched out. Here's my set that needs reorganized because there's lots of paints all over the place. Um, the, one of the first things I did when I got this palette was to replace three of the paints that came in the initial 24 set and that was the cobalt blue, which is 716, because I like 715 better. I replaced 713, the olive green, with 728, which is sap green, because again, I like um, this green is a little bit of a more natural looking warm green to me. I mean, it's not more natural looking. They're both very natural looking. I just preferred it. It's, it's a more traditional color for me to make mixes with, and I know what I'm getting with 728. So I did that. And then I took the sepia out. I believe sepia is the 722. It was just the weakest of the browns for me and a color that I'm pretty able to get by mixing other colors. And I replaced that 
with 744, which was the Opera Pink. Again, that was before I realized this was Fugitive. Since then, I went ahead and I bought 709. So I went back and the other, the following colors are colors that I added because of the way I like to paint, the things I like to paint, and um, what I am looking forward to playing with. I added the 709, like I said. I added Quinacridone Lilac 727. I love a good mauve color. This is the only purple in the set, so I wanted something that was a little bit of a different shade of purple that leaned a little bit more red. I wanted 735, which is Quinacridone Sienna? Quinacridone Gold. Quinacridone Gold. Beautiful color. Going to be beautiful for fall stuff. Going to be beautiful for landscapes and summer sunsets. I'm looking forward to using that Quin Gold. Beautiful color. And then I also, because I just wanted to for fun, I wanted to get 704, which is, I believe, the, the titanium white. Yep, titanium white 704. Um, and then I went ahead and I bought these two. The, I gotta get the list so that I can say them right. 745 and 748, which are Naples Rose and Naples Yellow Light. I've never had a Naples Yellow paint before, but I know a lot of people really like it. So I thought this was a good set to get it with and to play with it. And Naples Rose was just a really interesting different color. And I know they both have white pigment in them, but I thought, what the heck, I'm going to give them a try. So they were kind of just for fun for me to have their convenience colors. I could absolutely mix those colors with other things that I have. So there's my breakdown on all things Rosa watercolors. I really enjoy a good dot card. I think dot cards are super helpful in having a chance to play with every color of paint in a line and kind of decide what you want, what you like, what you don't like. And I hope that this was helpful to you because there are so many different versions of the Rosa watercolors out there. And really there's not a lot of information about these paints other than the Rosa website itself. I'm going to link below um, an, an affiliate link on Amazon to the closest thing to this palette. This plastic palette has not been available on Amazon as of the time I'm recording this, which is May, late May of 2022. It's possible that it'll come back in stock, but right now this palette has not been available. They have lots of metal tin palettes that are available, so I will link those uh, below using an affiliate link to be completely uh, transparent about that. And then um, I'm also going to link Art for Ukraine on Etsy. That's where I got the dot cards. That's where I get my individual pans. They come directly from Ukraine. Um, Yevgeny at that store is just amazing to work with. He is very wonderful to talk to and um, really wants to make sure that things get to me. And I just can't say enough nice things about their store in particular on Etsy. Had a lot of great experiences with them. Okay, so that's going to be it for me today. I hope that this was helpful information for you. I have an extra Rosa dot card here that is completely unused. Do you want it? Do you think I should do a giveaway for it? Let me know in the comments below. I hope that this inspires you to get some of your paints out and play with them and see what kind of combinations you can come up with and maybe create some artsy bits yourself. Thanks everybody and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.